Okay, I'm in the process of doing this video for you. Uh, what I want to do is get this sorted as quick as I can because we've only got a few days left and we're Christmas. But as I'm going through it, I'm getting to the end uh, and then I'm planning on doing the outro. But I'm quite liking the end as it is. So what I've decided to do is do the outro on the intro. Okay, so I want to keep it short. So basically, for all of you out there that support the channel, I want to wish you a really Merry Christmas. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay, what I've decided to do is get outside as it's near enough Christmas, make it more Christmassy with all this ice that we've got and do the DIY fly tie and fish. So what you're going to love about this is it's stuff that most of us will have around the house apart from one or two things maybe a hook a bead and a flexi floss for the legs i've chosen this pattern mainly because of how successful the pattern is and it's successful throughout the year the summer months the winter months fish it fast fish it slow but it's a very successful pattern and now i'll only put patterns that i find are successful and successful to me isn't just going out on the odd occasion catching fish when it's more consistent and I find it's worth putting on the channel and this is one of them but it just happens that it's red which is more associated with Christmas which is great and this is why I'm doing this outside to give you more of a Christmas feel uh, it's difficult because it's cold and grabbing things my fingers are a little bit numb at the moment but it isn't going to take long. This is a simple, simple job. Um, but why I want to do it is obviously to give you guys at home that aren't into fly tying an opportunity just to do this and honestly give it a go because it is simple. And most of the products I'm using are from around the house. So what we'll do, we'll crack on with it. And then, as I say, we'll watch it on the water. And I think most of you will already know that it's a good pattern. Okay, so what we're going to need, a um, pair of pliers, quite a heavy elastic band, a pair of scissors, whatever scissors you got, a bit of cotton, red cotton obviously using here. Just go into the wife's sewing box, see what she's got. Uh, I'm not using the proper tying material, this is all about what you can find mostly in the home. Um, super glue or nail varnish. Uh, and obviously the sort of things is you may have to purchase this it's your flexi super stretch floss or anything that's flexible red in this case you can do any color it's a small bead that there is I think it's a four mil tungsten and whatever hook you want to put on now for this we're not going to be too precise it doesn't have to be absolutely tight brilliantly now the first thing what I'll do so I've got the bead and a good way to do all of this is if you've got your hackle pliers you can get your hackle pliers and pick your bead up get it dead center it will flick out if you're not too careful you're able then to manage putting everything in to that bead obviously what we're going to use as most of you at home will be using your pliers so just keep that steady if it flicks out you've got to go chase it okay first thing I'll do is get my floss double it up I've got my bead pick my bead up through the wider part of the hole and just feed that in uh, I'm not very good at this I'm shaking it's pretty damn cold out here once you've got done that get your hook again and feed the hook through through the narrower part of the hole oh come on keep still oh uh, no right once your hook's in 
grab it all together just release the players and all we're going to do now is just switch that around that is actually the hardest part of tying this fly where it is for me put your players grab the hook elastic band nice and tight around the handle of the players Okay, once your pliers are in place, you need something that's a little bit slippy on you. I don't know if that helps. It does a bit. What we need to do is just hold that tightly as we can. I got the weight for the parasail on the barbecue on the patio set. This is what I found out here just now. That's fairly steady. Okay, so once you've got it all in place, you get your cotton and just gently wrap around and locking in that tail end that's in your left hand. And once you've locked it in, just build up the thread. What I'll do is just put that up by here, get my scissors, and just chop that tail off a little bit. Uh, and just continue with the thread now this doesn't have to be too tidy I'm putting a little bit of weight on the back there tying that in there just one because this is bulkier material as to the normal tying threads that we normally use uh, you can cover it up quite quickly once you've done that all you've got to do is a couple of half hitches get in the material twist your hand over hold that there over the top and then what I do is I use that finger just to hold that in place and just slowly pull that up just tighten it up a little do a couple of them in there, in there, and that is it. Tighten them up. Get your scissors, hold it on there, slide it up. Here we go. Slide it up, cut that tail off. If you want, you can just get the back end where you doubled up, cut that off, and all you've got to do then is put your super glues on or your nail varnishes. And that is as simple as it gets. Now, once you've done your super glue in, don't put too much on at a time, but probably you might find that putting about two coats of this on. Uh, I don't know if the cold has affected this. It may have. There's nothing coming out of there. Oh, there is a little bit. There it goes. Squeeze a bit harder. Okay, but don't end up gluing your pliers. Just spread that around. And that's as simple as it gets. And that is the fly. Done. It's rough, isn't it? it must be off our trolley. And is it calm up here, mate? It's calm up here. on that black leggy thing okay in this session i've decided to switch it and start it off with the black now i couldn't tell you the black fish is any better or as good as the red or any of the other colors to be honest it's just that whenever myself and the boys are fishing this pattern we generally just go straight to the red so we've not really fished the other colors enough but this pattern really does fish well in all conditions. You could have changed the method as to how you present it. For the best and the most exciting of the fishing with this pattern is definitely when it's a bit overcast and a bit more wave on the water. You generally find the fish are moving about a lot more mid-water 
and by putting this out and sometimes letting it drop a bit quite a steady to fast figure of eight or even stripping it in quite quick another great way to retrieve is the roly-poly again cast it out let it drop a bit but keep it consistent try not to make it too jerky maybe try something a bit faster and then maybe if nothing's happening try slowing it down but you can certainly cover a lot of water with this method like and the takes are normally thing. solid but what you will see over the next few clips that the conditions that I'll fish this pattern are going to vary One other thing that's worth mentioning, and it's when you find the retrieve that seems to be catching the fish. Once you reposition and you're at the other end of the lake, don't expect to be catching fish on the same retrieve. You could well find at the other end of the lake the fish are wanting something a bit different. Fin perfect. Beautiful. Okay, so for most of the time we're going to be fishing with a lot longer tippet and that tippet could be anything from 15 to 20 plus foot. What that does it enables us to fish the pattern a lot slower at depths but also it gives us confidence when we're fishing the pattern a lot faster given that the fly is a lot further away from the fly line. And if we ever need to shorten the tippet, it's normally because we're fishing in one either shallower waters or we're wanting to suspend the fly at slow pace. So if we want to present a pattern at about five foot, then we'll put about seven foot of tippet on and that'll be suspended from the floating line. Okay, quick update. Um, fishing this morning's been really difficult. There's quite a few of us up here fishing. They're coming out, but slowly. Most of them are on that red bead dangly leg thing that I've got. I've given a lot of the fly, most of my flies away now. So that's been quite a successful pattern. Okay, fishing on a day like today is all about patience. Out in front of me now is about 18 foot of water and the fish seem to be down. They're not really moving about much. So from the floating line, if you can manage 20 or 20 plus foot, this will allow you to get down to the bottom. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm bouncing the pattern on the bottom. But by the end of the day, you'll have numbers. That works quite fine. As I say, it's a slow retreat, just keep it in contact every now and again, just a slight figure of eight, speed it up, that's in there. When you're fishing this, you really got to get that memory on that line sorted. Them takes are so soft, it's very hard to pick it up. That fast. Put the heavier weighted plastic thing on the bottom. Flies out. Great thing with barbless. That was the jobber. Do you have anything like that? <laughs> Go with that one, because at least with that, you know if the fish are down lower, you can leave it a bit more static, you're going to get the depth. If the fish tend to come up, just start twitching it, figure of eight. Okay, another one on. That's lovely. So far again? Yeah. Put it, put it on. Yeah, that was almost static. And every now and again, I'll just 
a couple of quick figure of eights. Yeah. Leave it sit again. Do you feel it then, or do you just watch the line? It's quite gentle, so uh, as long as you've got good contact, good line. Nice fishing. Now, the conditions here today again is a bit like last week when I was here and we had flat calm water, crystal clear water there, uh, bright sunshine. So again, the conditions is going to be quite tricky. This sun is so bright, I can hardly see, even with the glasses on. So what I've started off with on the end of this line is um, I had it the last time, the last last week or so, and it's the red uh, app squirmy thing, whatever you want to call it, with the weighted bead. I know there's going to be a few fish higher in the columns at the moment because the sun isn't completely up in the sky yet. Um, but I've put that on, and obviously if I want to keep it a bit higher, I'll put cast out and start retrieving a bit sooner but I'm going straight down with it what I've been experiencing with this particular pattern and the pace that I'm retrieving is is the takes very soft very slow yeah that um, orange and that red wormy thing I gave you. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I lost him. Came off. The same thing. That red squirmy thing. A weighted one. 